Hi, it's Marigold and welcome to my kitchen. Um, I'm not making cocktails today. Uh, basically what happened was I made some of these and posted my results on Facebook last week and people were begging me for the recipe um, and I thought, Do you know what, it would be better if I make a video. So people who know me know that occasionally um, I go on the ketogenic diet or the keto for short. Um, which is a 75% fat, 20% carb, uh, sorry, 20% protein and 5% carb. So 70% fat, 20% protein, 5% carb diet. Um, it's really worked for me in the past. Um, lost a stone and a half before lockdown, put it all back on. Who hasn't? Um, and one of the things I really miss when I'm on this diet is Yorkshire puddings. Because um, Yorkshire puddings, obviously, carb, carb full. There's probably about nine, 10 grams of carb in a Yorkshire pudding. Um, so it's something I really, really miss, and it's something I wanted to have. And I found this recipe for the low carb Yorkshire puddings, and it's a really, really great recipe. Um, and I've tweaked it ever so slightly to suit me, and this really, really works for me. So if you want to make some keto, some low carb Yorkshire puddings, stick with me, and first, you're gonna have to have a look at the ingredients. Super simple. All you're gonna need is 120 ml of double cream, a splash of almond milk, so between 30 and 50 ml, two medium-sized eggs, and 32 grams of arrowroot. Okay, so it's super, super simple. So we've got your ingredients here. All you're gonna need to do is crack your eggs in first, So we've gone for two medium eggs. Um, there we go, look at that. A little bit of a mess, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. Cooking happens like this, doesn't it? I'll just give that a bit of a tidy up, actually. Um, you just want two eggs. It doesn't really matter about the size. It's not an exact science, but you're gonna get best results if you use two similar size eggs, obviously. Um, so you've got your two eggs in there. It doesn't matter that that one's popped, because you are gonna you are gonna whisk it all. You've got arrowroot there. You can get arrowroot from all over. Holland and Barrett sell it. Um, I got this on Amazon. I got a kilogram of, of arrowroot for about six or seven pounds. Um, and it's really, really great. Only thing is, it's incredibly dense. So you need to make sure you get all of it out if you've weighed it like I have. And obviously we've got 32 grams there. Um, this recipe, you can half it if you just want to make half the amount. This recipe is for 12 muffin-sized Yorkshire puddings as well, which I didn't mention before. So get all your arrowroot into the bowl there. There we go. And then add your cream. So we've got 120 mils of cream there. Again, I'm gonna use the spatula just to make sure I get all that out there. Do you know the best thing in the world ever is a silicone spatula? Jack said it to me, my boyfriend Jack said to me, you should get a silicone spoon, you'll use it all the time. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, and I was doubtful, boys and girls, I was really doubtful. And then I bought a silicone spoon and I literally use it all the time, seriously, all the time. Um, so what we're gonna do is before you put the almond milk in, you just want to bind that together. I'm gonna to take the spirit slit off actually, using a whisk. So whisk it all together. The only thing I would say is our root is really, really dense. It's literally like, it's like powder paint. Do you remember powder paint from school? Um, so when you start whisking, do it carefully because if it flies out of the bowl and gets on your clothes, you're gonna have to put them straight in the wash because it doesn't stain, it's just an absolute bugger to get off. So you want to um, whisk that all together. So once it's incorporated a bit more, you can whisk it more vigorously then. Do you know, whether I'm doing cocktails or cooking, it's always something that absolutely knackers me out. So give that, you can see there, it's, it's starting to incorporate. It does it really easily. And then add your splash of almond milk. So actually, this is probably about 50 mils. I'm just gonna use half of that. I think half is probably the best. Yeah, that's great. And then it comes together and it starts to look like Yorkshire pudding batter would anyway. So you want to give that a really, really good whisk. And then keep your whisk handy, you'll find out why later on. I'm gonna pop that there. 
and then all you need to do is pop your mix in the fridge because your mix needs to chill for about half an hour. Okay, so I have that chilling and I uh, did a right mess there. These things happen. Um, and then the next thing is, it's a bit of a weird one, but this is what I like to do. Um, you can argue with me in the comments, that's absolutely fine, but this is how I did it. It came out perfectly and this is how I've done it ever since. Um, so, <laughs> I'm one of those people that if something works out right, I'll just do it the same way every time. So you want to grease your tin. Um, on the keto diet, it's all about fat, so I use ghee, uh, but you can use butter. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know ghee, it's clarified butter. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grease the tin and I'm going to put the tin in the fridge as well because the butter goes cold and sticks to the side of the tin and then it stands less of a chance of burning when you actually come to cook the Yorkshire puddings. So you just want to line your tin. I'm going to put my fingers right in, uh, which, you know, it's the quickest way, honestly. If you're going to be precious about these things, you're going to be in the kitchen for ages fannying about with a pastry brush. But literally, you just want to go in there, finger it like you've just bought it dinner, get those all done. And it's a super quick way of doing it as well, it really is. If you were going to use butter from the fridge, use it from the fridge and literally just use it like, um, you know, like a crayon. Just draw it all in. There we go. See, I'm halfway through already. Because if I was being really precious, this would take absolutely ages. Um, if you don't want to go too fatty and you're just here for the low carb option, you could use Fry Light if you just wanted to spray it in. Um, all it is is you just don't want them sticking to the sides, but because they're so small, the, the chance of that happening is quite slim. And luckily, you're making, uh, you're making 12. So there's, you know, if you ruin a couple, it's absolutely fine. Um, another thing worth mentioning is these are really great to freeze. You can freeze them. They'll last about six, six to eight weeks in the freezer and um, they cook straight from the freezer in about three minutes in, in a hot oven at about 180 fan. So that's your, your tin all greased and I'm going to pop that in the fridge. There we go, I'll put it in there. My fridge is just full of booze. Uh, when isn't it really? So there we go. So that's really simple. All you've got to do is keep that in the fridge for about half an hour. Um, so I'm going to go away for half an hour and find something to do. Um, cheers. And um, about halfway through that, so about 15 minutes in, you want to put your oven on to preheat 200 degrees or 180 if it's a fan assisted oven. Um, so remember, 15 minutes from now, if you're gonna, if you're cooking along with me, pause it now, set a timer for 15 minutes, and put your tray, uh, put your oven on at 180 fan, 200. Okay. So I'll see you in half an hour. Right. Okay. So it's been half an hour. I set my oven to preheat about 15 minutes ago, 180 because it's a fan assisted oven. If it's a normal oven, 200 degrees. And then about five minutes ago, I put my muffin tin in the oven to get hot. That's very important. You want cold mixture and a hot tin like you would with a normal Yorkshire pudding. Okay, so I'm going to take my mixture out of the fridge. And then I did say to you to keep your whisk handy. All it is is it settles a little bit. So just give it another little whisk because it will just settle a little bit while it's in the fridge. But thanks to the almond milk, it's not as dense. I was making it without almond milk originally. That's when I saw the recipe. And um, no, you want it to be, you want it to be nice and runny. Right, so let's get a tin out, which is now heated up. All that clarified butter, or whatever you want to use, has melted. And then you want to put the mixture evenly into all, all the little holes. And you can see it don't mix in with the oil which is great which stops it sticking too that's it you can be as gung-ho as you like if you're cooking these for your family you know there's going to be an argument over who's got the bigger yorkshire so do be careful in that respect you don't want to start any wars but as soon as they taste them 
they are going to be very happy all the same. There we go. So I'm still a few little small ones. Get, just get it as even as you can. It's your Sunday lunch. So you're not going to be judged. It's not a competition. There we go. You can see that the mixture goes a really, really long way. Okay. And then we want to bang that in the oven. Okay. So we're putting that in the oven. There we go. So you want that on the top shelf of the oven for about 25 minutes. And as I've said, 200 in a normal oven, 180 fan. Don't open the oven door. Uh, you raise an agency reg, so it's, it's not going to be tragic if you do open the oven door. You know, you are going to be a bit curious. But um, I think you'll be really pleased with the results. So I'll see you back here in 25 minutes. Okay, so we're nearly there. Just before I take them out, they've got a minute to go. Um, I just want to talk to you about gravy. If you're doing a low carb lifestyle, um, gravy is a, a, a bit of a pain really because obviously it's full of emulsifiers and stabilizers and blah blah blah. It's full of carbs basically. Um, but looking around, one of the best gravies I've found is actually Morrison's onion gravy. And do you know what? Per 100 mils, it's 2.8 grams of carb. So you don't actually need that much gravy. If you're being good, 100 mils is absolutely fine just to wet your, your meat and your Yorkshire's. Um, Another one as well, you can use things like bovril and stuff like that to, to make things and thicken it. You can thicken it with things like, um, you can use arrowroot to thicken it, but if you just don't want to mess about and you want a gravy, can you hear my oven? But Morrison's onion gravy is the best one, in my humble opinion. Right, that beep means that they are done. So let's take them out. Oh, and there we go, look at that. <laughs> so as you can see, the varying size a little bit because I want like Carol Vorderman with my mixture. But as you can see, they are some pretty awesome Yorkshire puddings and they are crispy, but they'll be chewy and doughy and lovely on the inside like a normal Yorkshire pudding. Um, and they're about 2.45 grams per Yorkshire pudding, which is nearly four times less than a normal Yorkshire pudding. So they're a really good, really good alternative. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with those. And the best thing is I get to eat all these now. Um, so as I did say before, they freeze really well. If you want to keep them in the freezer, save a few. They'll be all right in the fridge for a couple of days. But to be honest, if you've got the room, just shove them in the freezer. They're all right for a couple of months in the freezer and they cook straight away, three minutes cook them through at 180 or 200 on a normal oven. They are absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So please give it a go, give it a go and let me know how you get on. And it's as simple as that. Super crispy, super tasty, low carb keto Yorkshire puddings, only 2.5 grams per pud and they freeze easy as pie as well. It's a great recipe and I'd love to know what you think and if you've tried it yourself. Thank you. everybody thank you so much for joining me in the kitchen i hope you've enjoyed yourself and i hope you're going to give it a go please let me know in the comments about your results don't forget if there's something you want me to try i'll have a crack at it just get in touch of course hit subscribe and don't forget to check out all my other videos as well thank you